Vamos a continuar con la siguiente ponencia. Le damos una cordial bienvenida a Lisbeth Ibáñez, Suset Pobletti y Camila Sepúlveda, estudiantes del tercer año de la licenciatura en Educación, Convención en Inglés y Pedagogía en la Universidad Metropolitana de Ciencias de la Educación. Su ponencia, su ponencia lleva por título Chichi Fragism, Communitarian Education and Teaching of English of Low Educated Adults. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, to begin with, let me give you some uh, definitions of the word or the concept of education. Well, education has been one of the most important uh, methods to integrate people into a civilized society. It is the way social organizations uh, transmit the accumulated knowledge from generation to generation. It also helps people to receive all the necessary values and codes in order to fit in the current uh, social system. Well, in this sense, due to the importance of education in modern society as a means to overcome what is known as underdevelopment, educational systems have been in the limelight of criticism. Okay. Well, uh, those educational systems are an issue that is subject to different uh, commentaries or disapprovals. Some of them criti uh, I mean, giving credit yeah, to what education has achieved in modern societies, and others uh, criticizing the social situation that education creates. Okay? Well, bearing this in mind, we must understand that Criticism or prices do not come from an objective point of view, but from a bias of ideological origin. Well, education is a process focused on the teaching of individuals which uh, attempts to form a certain type of human beings. It's a process, uh, well, I mean, in this matter we have two options. We create Um, I mean, we educate individuals in order to uh, form them in, like, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, we form individuals dedicated to the maintenance of the current society or make them engage to the transformation of it. Well, in this context, now we present uh, the experience of Escuela Pública Comunitaria, a communi communitarian educational institution, institution which is committed to egalitarian and democratic methods, territorialized curriculum, and also uh, materials based on the community needs, following the community values to determine the direction of their own education. Okay, uh, we focus our presentation on the teaching of English uh, to low educated adults in back to school programs, um, helping them to finish their uh, secondary studies. Uh, because according to the considerable data from CASEN, which is <laughs> Caracterización uh, Socioeconómica Nacional, um, more than 5 million uh, adults have not finished their uh, primary and secondary obligatory uh, studies. And also, uh, back to school programs have not uh, been a priority for the government. Uh, in fact, there are almost no laws uh, to facilitate and motivate education for adults. Um, we have to add that there is few research related to adults uh, who have not finished their education. And unfortunately, 
uh, the other applications uh, have been no uh, have been apparently ignored not only by the governments but also by the scholar community in general. It is important to mention that the students' movement have not considered or included the needs of low educated adult education in their demands. So basically, they're all alone. Okay, um, to give you, uh, <coughs> to give you with a little, <laughs> sorry, to provide you with a little, con a little bit of context, um, we had an assignment uh, to related to the PEI, which is the Proyecto Educativo Institucional. It's a document with. Uh, the objective, the vision, and the mission of the school. That is. <laughs> so we had to uh, choose a an school and see if the baby uh, was applied there. And we chose we chose a uh, EPC, Escuela Pública Comunitaria. Why? Because we had to analyze. No. <laughs> we had to analyze the PEI and see if it was present inside the classroom uh, to learn about new ways of teaching, to contribute to adult education and know an alternative educational system. We wanted to go beyond university tasks because normally when we, students are assigned uh, this task they usually go to the schools they attended or the schools they know, so they see everything they saw while they were studying. But we wanted to come out of our comfort zone and we wanted to visit a school that had very different values and ways of teaching and things that we had never seen before. Okay, so in our observational placement, uh, there were many things that caught uh, our attention and one of the first thing that we noticed uh, was the walls uh, painting by uh, students and teachers as a community as you can see in the pictures uh, all of them related to freedom of education equality and so social issues um, also classroom uh, had a particular uh, order uh, to contribute um, with the group work. <laughs> um, the relationship between teachers and students was so close, so uh, students were not afraid of uh, asking questions or to give their opinions or talk in front of the class. And also, this school is an heterogeneous school because you can find uh, students uh, who are different ages, uh, who come from different places, who uh, have different realities, and um, everybody learns from each other. And also in EPC, every student is considered like a person. And this was very new for us because normally teachers uh, see their students, or what we are used to, is teachers see their students as people who just go there and sit and they have to listen and they don't have to talk to each other. But here at EPC, every time they started a class, the teacher would ask the students how they were, how was their weekend, if they have any problems or if they miss classes, they ask them why, if they need any help with something, and that was very really new and encouraging for us. Participating. Um, well, in our observational placement, we just had to observe <laughs> and see the classes. For that reason, uh, we noticed all the things that we mentioned before, but also we have the possibility to participate as assistance teacher. So we helped and guided students with the, uh, with the given activities and 
we could get in contact with the realities of the students. Mm -hmm. This was very useful for us because normally um, when you do your observational placement, uh, the teachers don't let you participate. They put you at the back of the class and they don't let you, for example, create activities or things <coughs> like that. But here, we had the opportunity to create activities and the students would participate uh, and we would together uh, be part of their education. And we have the possibility to, to teach uh, there and experience the teaching uh, by first hand. Uh, we learned that every person learns um, yeah. with different, different ways. ways, yes. Um, and it uh, is also <laughs> important to mention that, yes, we had the opportunity to teach, but we were not alone. The teacher that took us there and that recommended the school and that made everything possible for us to go there was always with us. He would give materials and he would uh, suggest uh, activities. And also, the students were also very eager to participate because normally if you have the opportunity to go to other schools and you present an activity, then students don't give their opinions or they just sit there and don't talk, but here they helped us. And it was very new for us. <laughs> well, as a conclusion, we can say that our observational placement at EPC was very important and useful for us because we acquired different tools for teaching that we know will be very useful when we have our duty as teachers in the future. We also broaden our view of the world. We confronted our own reality. We saw how uh, the low educated adult education needs, uh, needs things and how they are abandoned and what we can do to help them. We got in contact with new realities that we wouldn't have got in contact with if we didn't visit a school like EPC. And we also learned about different and effective approaches that they use there and that we know and saw were more effective than the ones used in more traditional schools. And it was also helpful for our personal growth because we didn't go there just to teach and expected, expected the students to learn things from us, but we also learned very important uh, things and lessons from them. So we encourage you, if you are interested in the pedagogy area, to visit the schools like this and to get involved in schools like this because they are very open and if you go there, they will welcome you like you were one of them. And that's it. Thank you for listening. Hello. Hello. Uh, I really like your presentations, uh, but I'm wondering about something what well, related to the uh, specifically to the teaching of English. Um, considering the fact that you were working on a um, on a school for adults, how? I mean, what's about their motivation to learn English? Because I'm thinking. Probably most of them maybe are not thinking of continuing studies in university, or maybe English is not uh, exactly a part of the future project. How did you face that? Well, actually, um, since they are there to complete their compulsory studies, English is uh, also part of the curriculum. Yes. So, yes. Not all of the students were very interested in learning English, but we try, and the school tries, to adapt the lessons to make them, I don't know, entertaining for them, or, we, or they saw topics that were related to their lives, 
So, for example, we yeah. used balloons and little whiteboards. So it was very dynamic. Yeah, but like the younger students were like more interested in, in all this stuff, the English. So because well, the movies and music, and they know that it is such a useful tool for the future. Yeah, they all know, so. are aware. They all are aware that English is a very important thing nowadays. So, for example, for as she said, younger students, they were interested because they wanted to um, watch movies like, yeah. or series. <laughs> but for more older people, they were encouraged by the young students to learn. English and to participate in the activities. So that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Terrific job. I really, really loved it. Um, I have two questions. One is uh, it is very clear from what you presented that, you, that the experience was very helpful for you. You, you benefited from it greatly. The question is did they benefit from the experience, the, the students and the institution itself? And then how would you know? That's, that's the first question. And the second one is, is adult education in general. It, it's staggering. Five million people not having finished a formal education is just mind blowing. Uh, and then two questions about that. One, what is, why do you think it's been completely forgotten? If you say that not even the, the education, educational social movement has been focused on this. And on the other hand, um, um, well, it's a huge number and nobody's paying attention to it. Why do you think it's that and what would be the impact? Because you might say, well, it's fine, they, they're already adults, they're already doing what they're doing. What will be the input of actually teaching? So, so sorry, it's like a good question. <laughs> so, how do they benefit? How do you know? Um, why, is it, why is it a problem, uh, this problem about adult education? And why do you think it's been forgotten, even when people are interested in, in, in improving education? Thank you. Uh, okay. <laughs> Well, I think that what they learn from us, maybe not that much, but <laughs> if, maybe if they see us as young, well, yeah, we're young people. And <laughs> they, they can be just, because it hasn't been easy for us, like to be here or being studying in the university. So maybe they see that it is possible for them to do it. It is like maybe a motivation and they can then help more people like them. No people like them, but you know? So maybe like encourage them seeing us like a model, maybe? And also there were some students that uh, we at UMSE have a program and we teach English for free. So some of the students were interested in that program and now they are our, our students, students in the class yes. that we teach at Jose. Well, that is okay. And can you repeat the, yeah. the, the uh, second question? Education. Why do you think it's been forgotten and, and why should we care? I think we should care because it's quite a big number and it's important that everyone has the opportunity to get an education. Um, what do you think has been forgotten? Because it, it, it's, it's weird. I mean, the number is there. Mm -hmm. is yes. the population that should be at school. I think it's been forgotten because, for example, the people that went there, there were ladies that were 50 years old, yes. 40 years old, and they had their lives and they <coughs> could do things and they could work at things without needing their education. So maybe that's a factor. Anything else? Too? Exceeding the economical issues, really, they have, they have been forgotten for economical reasons. If you want to get the service low, they've already forgotten us on purpose people. by the government. They don't want, or the businessman, businesswoman, they don't want to focus on adult education. In that way, they can have salaries low because they haven't finished their studies. So for them, it's logical. So you don't spend your money in the There's no uh, human resources. There's no business. Yeah. Hi. 
Si tú no estás comprometido realmente con la pedagogía, tú no vas a poder enseñarle de una manera óptima a tu estudiante. Segundo, eh, con, en relación con los, <risa> con los adultos que no han terminado su educación. Eh, es súper triste porque, como lo decíamos en la presentación, el gobierno no se preocupa por ellos. Nosotros como estudiantes tampoco nos preocupamos por ellos. Cuando, por ejemplo, hemos salido a las calles a marchar por nuestros derechos, siempre los hemos dejado abandonados. Yo creo que a lo mejor nunca nos, a ver, como, nos pegamos la avispada de que había otro tipo de educación que era diferente a la que la mayoría de nosotros, creo, que tuvimos. Eh, yo creo que igual es importante desde cierto punto cuando la gente como que viene y se queja así como no, la educación es pésima, no, el mundo es pésimo, que se acaba de Chile ¿Sí? y resulta que, pero onda, al final no haces nada po. entonces yo creo que estas cosas partiendo por eh, o sea, porque como dijo el profe Diego ayer no es como que sea gente no educada ¿no? sino que en los estándares del ministerio y todas esas cosas no... No alcanzan los niveles, po, porque no han tenido muchas veces la oportunidad. Entonces Bien. yo creo que si empezamos por ahí, igual el cambio social que se puede hacer es súper grande. Entonces como que en vez de, así como la mayoría igual, los jóvenes a veces somos súper flo super flojos, y es como no, y que esto está mal, pero no hacemos nada. Entonces partiendo así, como educando a comunidades, ¿cachai? Siento que el cambio puede ser súper grande. Es importante también apoyar proyectos así, porque ellos, por ejemplo... Eh, reciben como una subvención del Estado solo una vez al año y, y por es estudiante que pasa una prueba y eso no alcanza ni para cubrir por ejemplo como la mitad del de arriendo del de lugar físico Vean entonces como, como claro pero es sí, muy, claro. De entonces, hecho, ellos tienen que entonces arriendan así como esta casa que es como la escuelita y onda, los profes trabajan gratis uh -huh. ¿Cachai? Así como que no la plata de la subvención alcanza casi solo para pagar el arriendo. Es subvención flexible. Es como la parte más cochina de la educación. De verdad, la más cochina. Porque para que nos den subvención, que son 20 lucas, por cada alumno que aprueba una prueba. Si el alumno aprueba la prueba, llegan 20 lucas. El resto del sistema es por asistencia. No, ah, eso es. No, prefiero que el resto del sistema es por si me pasa la prueba, no existe su Se supone que el gobierno pone los lápices, los libros, la coma y eso es Y eso es Y el resto de todo el gobierno son las actividades de nosotros, los profes, de los estudiantes, de la comunidad, de los vecinos, de todo. No. Entonces ahí la, la comunidad se subvenciona a su 
Sí, pero tenemos que seguir. Sí, <risa> 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 <risa>